Hi, welcome to Exploring the World Ocean. I'm Sean Chamberlain. In today's lecture, we're going to look at ocean food webs. That is, the interactions among organisms that leads to the transfer of energy and matter from lower trophic levels, such as the phytoplankton, to higher trophic levels, such as whales and dolphins, and even us. Let's take a look at what comprises ocean food webs and how a new understanding of ocean food webs in the ocean has really revolutionized our way of thinking about how the ocean works as a system. Scientists interested in ocean food webs might ask, what are food webs and how do they function? Why do oceanographers now define two types of food webs in the world ocean? What are some good examples of the coupling between physical, chemical, and biological processes in ocean food webs? What are some good examples of food webs that really demonstrate the coupling between these processes in the world ocean? And we'll also take a look at what is fisheries oceanography and why is it important? And this really goes to one of the most important issues in oceanography today. How can we protect species? How can we harvest species at a sustainable rate? Well, we start today with, as always, a few definitions. And really, when we're talking about interactions among organisms, and when we're talking about how energy goes from phytoplankton to higher trophic levels, and how the matter of phytoplankton, the, the chemicals that we talk about, the carbon that they fix, and the biologically important nutrients that become part of their bodies, how does all that stuff get transferred upwards? What are the interactions that occur between the organisms and their environment? What are the interactions that occur between the organisms themselves? Well, all of this encompasses one of my favorite topics in the world, ecology, in particular, ocean ecology. Ocean ecology is really the study of the inter interactions among organisms and between organisms and their environment. So all of those things. Literally, the word ecology comes from the Greek. It means the study of households. So actually, in studying this chapter, we're really studying the ocean household. We're studying all the things in it, how all the things interact with each other, and who keeps stealing whose milk. Well, if you lived in a college dorm, you'd understand what that meant. But in any case, what are the interactions among organisms and their environments? And what kinds of patterns emerge from studying that? And how does studying those patterns of interactions among organisms help us again understand how the ocean works as a system? Our understanding of ocean ecology really takes in everything that we've studied so far. It requires a good understanding of ocean geology, ocean physics, ocean chemistry, ocean biology. That's really why it's one of my favorite topics. And I, and I really can't emphasize this too much. One of the reasons for putting ocean food webs at the end of the book is so that everything we've learned from the very beginning of the semester, really in talking about habitats in the ocean, particularly how geology and how different things like mid-ocean ridges and trenches and seamounts create habitats for organisms, and we've talked about the chemistry of the ocean, how the chemistry of the ocean affects organisms, how biologically important nutrients are important, especially for phytoplankton, the physics of the ocean, how the temperature structure of the ocean creates layers of the ocean, those create habitats for organisms. We've talked about the role of the ocean in the atmosphere in terms of upwelling especially and currents that move water masses around. We've talked about as well the circulation of the ocean and how this creates structure, physical structure in the ocean that's important for the organism. And even talking about waves and tides and the organisms themselves and phytoplankton and productivity, all these subjects come to bear on our understanding of ocean ecology. It really encompasses just about everything we've learned. It requires a kind of jack-of-all-trades understanding, but really in a very deep way if you're going to pursue this subject as a career.